Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and uh, this is just gonna be a video addressing some, uh, well, there's a lot of little things and I don't like making little videos. So first of all, um, Ryzen 2000 series is coming very, very soon and I'm getting a lot of questions about motherboards and stuff and it's just like, I can't help you, I don't have anything, okay? I don't have a Ryzen 2000 series, I don't have any X470 motherboards, and basically I have zero, uh, th like, Aside from the PCB breakdowns that I will be doing for Gamers Nexus, I'm not gonna be do like, there's not gonna be any Ryzen 2000 series content on this channel for a while. Okay, let's just put it that way. Um, CPUs come out on April 19th, but unfortunately, um, well, I don't get samples, so, you know, that, that makes that difficult, but... The bigger issue is that, um, right now, all of the money I have for AHOC, I'm basically stockpiling to go to Computex, um, and Computex will cost, like, that entire trip costs, like, $2,200, and as of right now, I have some $1,280 saved up for that. Now, if we, now, if I don't actually make the, you know, $2,200 target, then, uh, well, I guess we'll just go buy a shit, like, I can go buy a, like, truckload of, uh, X470 motherboards and Z3, or, actually, Z390 should be launching pretty soon. So I guess I'll wait for Z390 boards and, you know, I, I can blow the budget all <laughs> on, uh, uh, testing a lot of motherboards. So we'll do, like, I think, what I'm thinking is, like, take one high-end board from every brand, so, like, the top-end board, and then take, like, uh, a lower end board because I know all the other YouTube channels always cover the high end stuff anyway. They cover it really badly, but they still cover it. Um, and then the low end stuff because nobody really covers that. And uh, that stuff is, in my opinion, like the most interesting because that's where you get all the nasty surprises like, oh, this motherboard doesn't have working VRM safety features and it's on fire now. That's great. Uh, though I've not actually come across that in a while. Like, the, the last time that was common was, like, the AM3 Plus motherboards, but you never know. Somebody might decide that temperature sensors cost too much, and so, suddenly the motherboard catches, you know, uh, and everything goes uh, really badly from there. But, yeah, so basically, uh, the only way I'm going to be doing a lot of Ryzen 2000 series content is if uh, I don't make the Computex budget, or if you all complain about going to Computex being, like... A waste of my time. I mean, ultimately, I, I run this channel for you guys. I personally, like, while I really want to see um, some of the computer hardware at Computex, I'd rather not go to Taiwan, um, which which really kind of sucks because all the hardware is made, like, MSI, Asus, EV, uh, well, MSI, Asus, Gigabyte, uh, G-Skill all have headquarters in Taiwan, and I think uh, Team Group is also in Taiwan. And then EVGA R&D, which EVGA is US-based, but their R&D team is in Taiwan. Like, basically all of the computer hardware industry is in Taiwan, at least the part I deal with. Um, uh, there's also obviously some companies that are from China, like Galax, uh, XFX, Sapphire, but a lot of them are from Taiwan. So going to Computex would be like a really co cool opportunity to... Uh, well, go to Computex, the show, but also potentially visit, uh, for example, EVGA R&D, because um, uh, that's where Kingpin and Tin work. So we could maybe do some, you know, benchmarking on liquid nitrogen with uh, EVGA hardware. Um, but I'm not sure how I'll turn that into content. Same goes for the actual Computex main show. I don't know how I'd turn that into content. So I'd completely understand if you all would just prefer that I buy a bunch of motherboards and test them, um, which... I'm, I kind of don't care which one of those you opt for, because uh, which one you, uh, which of those you would prefer to see. But as of right now, if I want to go to Computex, there is no way I'm covering Ryzen 2000 series for a very long time, um, like months. So, yeah, that that's a trade that kind of has to happen. Now, the other topic I wanted to address is the Strix Z370G video, I ripped on that board really, really hard, and I'm not going back on that, okay? I think for a motherboard that has the Republic of Gamers branding, that VRM is just completely inadequate. Like, this is, uh, like, it's just, no, like, it's unacceptable. Um, but I will point out, it does, you know, it, it, 
it'll kick out some, what, like 20 to, I think it was like 25 watts if you have an 8700K absolutely hammered. All of those current draw figures were for AVX. That wasn't for like, that was for like Prime 95. That wasn't for like, you know, r like Blender renders or something like that was the hottest thing possible. Um, so, you know, it wouldn't necessarily, like, it wouldn't necessarily be a problem in daily usage, but if you're stress testing, that VRM will get stupid hot. Um, the other thing is 20 watts is actually really easy to handle if you just, like, 20 to 30 watts on a VRM heat output is easy to handle if you just get it some serious airflow. Like, pointing out, like, if you have, like, an AIO, just, like, zip tie a 120 millimeter fan over the, the VRM section, it'll look horrendous, but it'll work. It'll run really, really cool, because that's usually how I deal with motherboards with weak VRMs, just stick a fan over it. Um, but, yeah, so... It's not like that board couldn't run a system. You could totally run a system on it. It's just, in my opinion, for for a Republic of Gamers uh, motherboard, which, because the thing is, I really consider ROG sort of like, uh, for, for the longest time, I considered it a safe bet. But ROG's Strix division, notice, is much, much cheaper than all of the previous ROG boards, right? Because if you look at, like, the Maxima series, like a Maximus... Uh, six or seven gene board like or even the maximus eight gene which was the last matx uh main mainline rog board because not strix um that thing was really expensive that was over 200 uh, that was over 200 dollars and the strix boards are now under 200 dollars and well yeah the, the the price point reflects the quality the board kind of sucks in my opinion and it's just like, honestly, I, I went into that expecting an ROG board and I got $170 mainstream Intel garbage, which is honestly like, that is kind of what you get. If you go under $200 on an Intel platform, that is the kind of build quality you should expect from the motherboards because that's what the manufacturers will give you. Um, which, uh, fun fact, uh, there's actually no other motherboards in that same price range on the MATX form. Actually... I'm not aware of any MATX motherboards that are much better than the Z, like Z370G Strix, which is really disappointing. Basically, if you're building an MATX system with an 8700K and you want to hammer the CPU, like run 1.4 volts into it, uh, there aren't any motherboards that are really adequate for doing that because they all kind of suck. Um, at least they won't do that if you don't get some serious airflow over the VRM. So, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, not great, you know, to say the least, but, yeah, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm incredibly disappointed by that motherboard, and then I'm even more disappointed by the fact that I go and check all the other MATX boards, and it's just like, this is all equally bad. Like, where, where, where did the choice, like, it used to be you could, like, in the past, right, you had the expensive MATX boards from ROG, and then you had everybody else making roughly the same level of quality, just different colors and slightly different price points. But the ROG board was always way, way more expensive. And now it's just like, they're all the same price and they all suck equally. And it's just really, really disappointing in my opinion, because I'm kind of a fan of the, the MATX form factor. I don't like, well, to be completely honest, storing full-size ATX boards is taking a significant amount of space under my desk, and I'd much rather if the boxes were smaller. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I do actually like ITX and MATX boards because I don't always need a four-way capable motherboard. But, uh, yeah, it's just on Z370, they all just kind of suck, um, which is, uh, which is really unfortunate, but plus points for Asus, because uh, if you buy the Z370G, you don't have to be disappointed, because if you bought any other MATX board, it would have been just as bad. So, yeah, I, I don't... Th that That's kind of that. Um, but Airflow will, like, if you just throw Airflow at it, it's viable. It's totally viable. If you're on an i5, it's fine. And interesting side note, the VRM on the Strix Z370G is basically the exact same VRM that you had on the Z270G. You know how Intel was like, oh yeah, we're changing the socket because Coffee Lake uses more power, so we need a new socket for higher power motherboards? 
honestly, most of the Z370 motherboard lineup recycles the Z270 VRMs. Like, it's literally the Z270 VRM with the Z370 chipset. That's all they've done. Um, and, and the Strix uh, Z370G is a perfect example of that. There are, like, there, if you go high-end enough, there are actually pretty significant differences. But for a lot of the sort of mainstream boards, they are literally copy-pasting the Z270 VRMs onto the Z370 boards. And the problem is, Coffee Lake pulls way more power than KB Lake does. Because Coffee Lake is pretty much KB Lake with two more cores. And the funny thing about two more cores is they pull about... You know, if you go from four cores to six, you end up using about 50% more power. It's actually not quite that bad. It's more like 40% because uh, it's it doesn't quite scale that linearly. I, I guess there's some differences in, in the rest of this, like in some of the parts of the CPU core that are uh, run off of vCore. But uh, Basically, if you go from a quad core to a six core, you can expect an almost 50% increase in power consumption. That's exactly what you get with Coffee Lake. And the VRMs stayed the same. So now motherboards that were previously, you know, for a 7700K, the Z370G is fine. It's not a problem. Um, but for 8700K, it is a problem because it pulls a lot more power. So... Yeah, that's uh, just just figured I'd clear that up because I was getting some questions. And yeah, if you're buying an MATX board for Z370, it's very much pick your own poison because they all kind of suck. Um, and the last point I wanted to address was uh, this 780 this 780 Ti um, from the fan mail video. Uh, it doesn't work, but luckily it looks like something I might be able to repair. So tomorrow at, I don't know what time, probably 9 p.m. UK time or 8 p.m. Actually, let's start 8 p.m. Because, uh, well, no, because it's the weekend. We can start at 9. So 9 p.m. UK time, I'm going to try to repair this thing. And I think I can because basically the only issue, which I went over this on yesterday's live stream, but basically the only issue, or wait, no, I'm screwing up my dates again, aren't I? Yeah, it's Friday. So on Wednesday's live stream. Anyway, um, the problem with this card right here is that basically the vCore VRM doesn't work, and that's very much within the realm of stuff I can fix because uh, we can, well, right now it looks like the vCore VRM tries to turn on, fails, and tries to turn on again, um, or there was a, just a measuring mistake from me when I was trying to turn the card on. Um, but regardless of what's wrong with it, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, shut down the voltage controller on here. Um, so pull the enable line low so that this thing doesn't try to turn on the VRM because I really don't know what's going to come out the output of that. Then we're going to try to e-power it with the VRM still attached. That's actually viable, um, because the high side MOSFET basically, uh, it, it basically turns as a turn, like it acts as an off, like turned off switch while the VRM doesn't run. So we'll turn off the VRM. And, you know, hook up another VRM onto this from, I think, from the back, just because that looks like the most convenient way, place to do things. Um, and then, hopefully, the card will turn on and have a display output. Because if I can't th get this to... Because, I like, the problem with cards where um, the VRM has failed for some reason is you don't know what's actually going on when you try to turn the card on. And there's a good chance that the VRM is shoving like two volts into the core. So when you get the VRM to work again properly, the core is already dead. So yeah, that's why I want to power it off of a known good VRM first and then try to fix the one that's already on here. And initially I was thinking I was going to completely e-power this thing, but looking at this PCB, there's not really any like good convenient, like if I pull the chokes off, there's not going to be like, there's no ground plane anywhere um, that's easy for me to attach to. So th this thing looks really, really hard to e-power, so I'd like to avoid that, um, which is why I've kind of changed my approach for this, where it, I'll actually try to fix the VRM. And it basically looks like there's a... An, and the main cause of all these issues is if you look at the card from this side, right, you can see how the PCIe slot connector is not straight with the rest of the PCB, and there are some... Well, okay, wait. I'm just going to put the camera... Where's my camera controls? There. So I'm going to put the PCB nice and close. No, nope. There, you can see how there's a crack in the PCB over there. And there's the, like, it's cracked on both sides. 
So, yeah. And that crack goes straight through a whole bunch of traces, um, which is why the vCore VRM doesn't turn on. So, basically, uh, I'll disable the VRM, and then I think... I'm, I, the problem is, I don't know if there's a short circuit in there and what, what kind of circuitry is going through there. So, um, yeah, like, power trying to revive this VRM is going to... Like, I'm basically thinking of reviving this VRM by disconnecting it from the GPU proper and then rewiring it myself. Because uh, I don't actually know what exactly is wrong in that area. And that's honestly fine. It'll just mean the card won't be able to change its voltage uh, through software. Um which isn't really a big deal, because I don't know if it has proper volt software voltage support, and I was planning to hard mod it anyway, so even if, like, if, if I didn't have uh, software voltage support, so, yeah, um, and that might be, I might, well, I might be live streaming that tomorrow, I mean, it's already dead, I can't make it any worse, <laughs> so, you know, it's not like some of the other cards where it's like, if I e-power this, I'm gonna break it, and now it's gonna stop working, this, this is already not working, I can't really make it worse, so, yeah, that's it for the uh, small topics that I wanted to go over. Um, also, uh, do let me know about the, like, if you want me to go to Computex. Uh, I still need, uh, what is it, $900 uh, before I can afford the entire trip. And if you all think going to Computex is freaking stupid, uh, you can leave a comment down below saying that it's freaking stupid. And uh, we'll see. Like, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I need all of the money for Computex by early May. Um, and the reason for that is, is I actually want to fly out towards the end of May. So, uh, because, uh, well, there's some stuff that, like, if I fly out early, I'll have an opportunity to do some stuff that I otherwise wouldn't have. Um, though I'm, again, not sure what kind of content it'll lead to. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, so, if you'd like to support the whole Computex thing, there's PayPal, there's Patreon, and there's t-shirts. You can find them down in the description below. I'm also getting rid of some motherboards and a i7-5930K. I have a 5930K I want to get rid of. I have a X99 UD4P I want to get rid of. And I have a B350 board I want to get rid of. And there's links to all of that down in the description as well. The 5930K is currently not listed, but I'll add it soon. Um, so, yeah, that, that pretty much uh, covers it. And uh, thanks for watching, and see you all next time. Goodbye.